This is part two of the cartooning in Illustrator and Photoshop tutorial. So in the, in the last tutorial we learned how to use Illustrator, shown here, to take an image and reduce its opacity to dim it down and create line work on it and then change the line work to stroke work as done with an ink brush. So you can see here it's more expressive than the old one. In the old one it was uh, strictly line work and pretty uniform all the way through. doesn't look too bad but it looks a lot better when you add some more expressive strokes to it from the brush panel. You can even create your own brushes as shown down here and drag them in there. In this tutorial we're going to use the same line work to color it down. Now if you have already a uh, an image you're working with you can take this and you want to actually take your layers panel and hide your original uh, sketch work and make sure you're only using the line work that you're finished with and if there's any additional strokes in there like this one you're going to want to take those out. So you're going to save this as an Illustrator document and then you're going to open it in Photoshop. So now we're going to go to Photoshop, let's save this, file, save, it's already a document. Okay. And sometimes it's going to ask me some questions. Usually I just want to say okay. And now I'm going to go open Photoshop. So now in Photoshop, I'm going to go find and open that image. So I'm going to fit this in here, file, open. Uh, I've got it saved in 224 drive. There it is, and there it is. So here's the picture. Now there's some questions that are going to arise when I'm working with this. And as you can see here, it's pretty tightly fit inside the image area. The default is always bounding box for crop to. And what it'll do, it's going to crop the image when it opens in Photoshop. And because it's line work, Adobe Photoshop is treating this Illustrator document as a PDF. Okay, so we're going to actually take this and choose media box. And as you can see, that gives us a bit more margin on the edges of the picture. So again, bounding box, media box. And it has no effect on the, the finished image. What it does affect is it affects the actual margins around the picture. So media box, bounding box. Always want to have it as, and the bounding box essentially is the smallest area possible for the image. You know, uh, down to the smallest uh, smallest area where there's any any graph marks in the picture. And media box is the actual size of the original document. So we want to choose this at 3000 or 300 resolution, constrained proportions, and click OK. Now at this point you can see that we have a checkerboard background which indicates that we have a transparent background. The opacity is high, it's, it's got an alpha channel. And what we want to do is we want to use our layers to make it so that we can uh, work on this a bit better. So let's open up our layers panel and just drag it into a more prominent view. And let's collapse these other panels here. The layers panel will be very important here because we want to pay attention to these layers. We're going to first name this original layer Line. And that's a good name for it because that's the line work. And we want to separate our line work from our color work on this image. So we're going to add a few more layers. And we're going to put our line work on top. Let's see, we're going to add three extra layers. Put the line work on top. Oops, one more layer at the bottom. And the purpose for each of these, uh, for each layer, is specific. And, and the important thing is to always preserve your original line work without doing any damage to it through your coloring process. The bottom layer is what we're going to call matte, M A. T T E, and that's just our base color, so we don't have to look at this darn checkerboard. And you can choose a color you like there, but we recommend something relatively uh, flat and desaturated. The next layer up is going to be our gap layer, and I'll explain that in a minute. Next layer up is going to be our color layer. Yeah, that didn't spell right. Let's see, color. There we go. And the next layer up from there is going to be uh, we can call it highlights and shadows or effects. I'll just call it effects. Essentially, that's where our highlights and shadows are going to go. And the reason we're separating out all of our pieces is once it goes well on one layer, we want to do well and move on to the next and not have any of, our, any of our mistakes affect the work we've already finished. So I'm going to create a matte layer, and you'll see what this is. I'm going to choose a layer, a color of blue, pretty light, real desaturated. As I slide left, it's more desaturated. As I slide down, it's darker values. So I'm going to get a real desaturated light color. I don't want to use white. White's hard to look at. It's kind of intimidating when you're trying to draw on something. And I'll take the paint bucket and fill that in. Now you can see it's much easier to look at my colors now. And what I'll do is I'm going to have my gap layer, which is going to allow me to um, color in my gaps. Because if I select with my magic wand tool, 
So one of the things that we're going to use as a tool to color our work in is we're going to use selections. And as this selection here is closed, let's zoom in on that, you can see there's no gaps in the line work. And that's good because it'll fill up very nicely. But if I go to my letter color here, you can see there's a gap right there. And so it's going to go outside. So the marching ants are going all over the place. Again, here's the eyebrow, and that's closed. So we want to make sure we're able to color easily by creating gap fills. And that's why this gap layer is important. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the red ink. And I'm going to get the brush tool. I'm going to choose a nice, that's kind of a big brush. I'm going to use a, there we go, that'll work. And right now my opacity is down on that because I was doing something earlier. And here's my opacity all the way up. And I want to make sure my selections are off. And there I'm just closing the gaps. Okay. Closing the gaps. So I'm going to go all around the picture and make sure that each area that will become a color region is going to be closed. So that nothing will go outside and I can easily fill up the picture. Now I'm going to be doing the coloring on a separate layer from line work because remember I want to keep my line work pure I want to keep it from getting messed up and I want to make sure that if I make any mistakes that they're isolated from other parts of my picture I think that's filled up I think that's closed off so what I'm going to do is use the magic wand tool which is hidden beneath the quick select tool make sure you choose the magic wand not quick select and there are the faces closed and the eyes and the ears and the hair and the hair and the other hair. There we go. So now I'm done with the gap layer. When you're done with the layer, good idea, click on the lock and lock it. That way you don't make mistakes and do stuff on the wrong layer. Now we're going to go to the color layer. So I've already got this area selected. A good thing to do, in the old days in comic books, and I guess they're still printing them, they would print the colors uh, at a different time as the line work. And to make sure that we want to make sure that the line work goes on top of the color, we're going to expand our selection. So here's select modify expand usually about three pixels works pretty good and there you can see the selection goes underneath now I'm going to pick a skin tone skin tones tend to be between red and yellow depending on ethnicity and a lot of other things exposure to sun age and you'll notice that skin tones are very rarely the same all the way across based on how the light hits a person etc. But we're still going to pick one basic color to build with. And remember cartoons being uh, what they are aren't too realistic. Okay, But I do want to try to I do want to try to get a semi-realistic look going on here. So I'm going to mess with my colors a bit more. That feels a bit hot. We don't want to saturate our skin tones too much. Okay, So we're going to slide that button there to the left. Notice that my saturation values are decreasing as I go. You can also click on S and drop your saturation this way. And keep trying that out. And as you work with it, it's getting easier to go. So now I'm going to pick the hair colors all at once. So here's the one hair area. And as we use Shift, or I can use this button here to add to selection. So I'm going to add to my selection. And I'm going to get the eyes, excuse me, the hair and the eyebrows all selected. And again, I'm going to expand my selection like this by about three pixels to make sure my color goes underneath my line work. And this guy is an old dude. I want to weather him down a little bit. I still want to see his hair. I don't want to have it be white. Okay, and there we go. It fills up all at once. So this is going to get the job done pretty quick and we're still not going to be finished. Remember we have another layer to work with and we'll see what that's about in just a moment. So modify, expand, three pixels. Let's give this guy green eyes. And of course if you want to you can always uh, I'll show you how to add some effects to this. Look at the effects layer now. Lock the color layer. We're pretty much done with it. We want to avoid anything that would wreck other stuff that we've already done. So now I'm going to choose a white color. Get a brush. I'm going to choose a soft edge brush about like this and if I bring down my opacity I can create a highlight on his eyes just a little bit and if we want to swap that out for a gray color then we can sort of add a shadow to the bottom just to add some mood to it a little bit okay deselect and there we go 
So the effects layer is where we have that, and let's check it out again. Here's again why we use layers. The line work will never be affected by my effects or my colors. Now you may be wondering, what about that red stuff in there, man? How about I get rid of that? All you have to do is shut it off. Don't delete that layer, which you could do, but deleting it would eliminate the possibility of being able to go back and fix anything. So you always want to keep that intact and make sure that's still there in case you need it later. So we're going to shut it off for now. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do some highlights and shadows on the effects layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the magic wand tool again. Or in this case, I might just do well with the magnetic lasso. So if I choose magnetic, la magnetic lasso, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating some shading on the nose to create sort of a 3D look to it. So now only the nose is selected. I'm on the effects layer. I got the brush tool. Let me get a bigger brush. Let's crank up the size here. And my goal here is to make it look realistic by creating shading effects. Now opacity is important here. Opacity, the less opacity it means every time I come through there, it's going to darken it up. So what that means is I can sort of create a gradual effect there, not swap it out for the white. And on the top of the nose where the light hits, we're going to, let's deselect it, we're going to create that effect there. And let's swap it out for the black again and lower the size. And there's a part of the bridge of the nose that I just want to create a small effect of shadow, not too much. So as you mess around with your settings and the opacity, you're going to get different kinds of results. So every place that you're going to have that shading is going to help us create a more realistic effect. So down below the lip is a good place for it. S spots on the ears. Okay, any place that we might find shading in the face. And it helps us also to direct the eye. So w what we emphasize on the face is going to lead our, fa our eyes someplace specific and it draws us to the middle here because the highlight and to the eyes. So we want to come back on the eyes and I just painted that with black. Let's do that with white. So I want to bring the highlight straight to the eyes. And as you can see, that's working pretty good. So I'm going to do the same thing on the tops of the ears. I'm going to bring the opacity up. And I'm working my way through that picture. One thing that's important to do is to remember, besides using your layers carefully, to name them and lock them and move amongst them as needed, is to use your selections. So I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select the skin tone. I'm going to expand that selection just a bit, as we've been doing. And I'm going to use the brush. Get a nice large size. And what I'm going to do now is use that selection to make sure my color stays where, 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 where it should be. Let's get a nice large brush. There we go. So what I want to do here is create some shading effects on the face. And it creates a realistic form as well as helping to direct the eye. So emphasis is a way of directing the eye where we want people to look. Okay, and we want to use that selection. It's kind of like making sure we don't color outside the lines. So as you can see, I made some other selections in here uh, that allowed me to paint in the effects of the highlights and shadows. So I've got a little highlight up here. So how you how you apply those is kind of up to you, but there's a lot of things that could be done, including, by the way, if we want to put a say a five o'clock shadow on this guy, just a just a bit of a beard effect, we can always okay. Now if I select this, and by the way, I forgot to tell you earlier, set a contigu contiguous and sample all layers. Now you'll notice it's only selecting the light part. So if I want to only select everything on that layer, I'm going to go back to this color layer and now select that and then turn the effects back on. And now if I want to work around with uh, some, like I said earlier, some 5 o'clock shadow action. Okay, I can just sort of choose that as I want. And a little bit darker up there. And again, I'm using opacity. And I can create sort of a patchy effect there. And he looks kind of like a hobo. Okay, and that's, again, it's very opaque. I'm not going to work on detail with that. The more detail you apply to something, 
the more attention it's going to draw. So let's back off and see how that looks. Deselect. I'm going to zoom out. And there's a lot of ways to do this. This is one approach, but uh, you definitely want to be using layers to get this right. Thanks.